Uh, good evening, folks. Dr. Freedom here with the Times from Dr. News. News from in around the universe. It is so amazing, so incredible, so beyond the norm. It is on a level that very few people ever reach and ever want to come back from. Yeah, but uh, a lot of weirdness going on. Like I said, uh, apparently they've been filming mainly at night. We've got this out of Bradders Walsh. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, also, like I said, speculation is about for one, what we do know for a fact is that several Daleks were removed from the media center in Manchester, which hints at the fact that yes, their Daleks are being used for filming since they're actual full on studio props. Now, the other thing is we have the Santaran angle and I know somebody out there, of course, is playing it for clickbait views as they normally do. And the thing is, as much as I'd like to jump up and down for joy and say it's confirmed that the Daleks and the Santarans are in there, wouldn't it be embarrassing as hell if I said, hmm, man, see, the Daleks came up missing today. What if it turned out they went out to, like, get a car wash or something, you know? Or maybe they're just hanging out. Maybe they got tired of, you know, the, the television center, you know? The vending machines aren't up to snuff, you know, so they're out, you know, prompt planning their, you know, crew. What am I saying? I don't know. But um, the thing is, the Santaran thing is all based off that photo. And the sad part of it is what little story we do have. And as much as I'd like it, jump up and down, say it's true. The Santaran story is coming from an anonymous account on Reddit. And the sad thing is, as much as I'd like to say it's a credible source, get your hopes up, go crazy. No. Now, some folks have been questioning me about where George Baker gets his stuff. And I'm not going to tell you. Usually, though, George does not run around spouting off total bullshit. So when he's talking about, there have been discussions that an old character is returning. He is, I, I trust that he is telling the truth based off what he's been told. Also, his sources are usually pretty good. So, but the thing is also there's, you know, everybody has been going nuts on that too, saying it's going to be, this is going to be that we don't know. And also what is their definition of old character? We're we talking character from earlier on in the modern series or character from the classic series. Now, as you all may remember, the last classic character to be debuted in the, you know, the new modern Doctor Who series was Sarah Jane Adventure. Oh, sorry, it's not Sarah Jane Adventure. It's, uh, Sarah Jane Smith. I like to wear fire hats. Oh, no, no. Was Sarah Jane Smith all the way back, you know, played by Liz Sladen in 2006 in school reunion. And of course that continued on through various episodes. And of course went on to the very successful spinoff unlike class of the Sarah Jane adventures. So, and also in the Sarah Jane adventures, we had a lot of old, you know, old school characters popping up. You had the Brigadier, you had uh, Joe, you know, you had Joe Grant or Joe Jones played by Katie Manning. And there were plans on the board to bring back ACE. There were plans to bring in by Sylvester McCoy, Tom Baker, just a few things that, you know, that were discussed. We talked about with her on this you know, show in various interviews and whatnot. And sadly that all went by the wayside when Liz Sladen passed away. But this, you know, the thing is, if they're going to do a damn spinoff, you can't banker it off. Oh, look, there's a school. <laughs> Aliens are taking it over in some plot to overrun the planet. Oy vey. But just, you see, the problem is, like I said, as much as I'd like to jump up and down and say, I know who it is, I know this definitely, I'm not walking into that bear trap. Because it could always turn out to be a deception. The BBC... You know, and you know the production team have done really wily crap before in the past to throw fans off. So let's say there's a good probability the Santarans are coming back, and it's probably pretty much definite the Daleks are. Now, as for the hogwash that the sonic screwdriver was seen in South Africa, no. If there was even the slightest hint of that thing being out in public, it would have been blown out all over the internet by now. Um, but you see, that's what I mean. There's people out there cashing in on it. So please be very careful who you get your info from right here. The fireman of Dr. Freedom. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, but let's get into the news. Let's get into what you're here for. Got enough of me ranting like an old man. Because guess what? All right, just a quick, quick trivia fact. It was 38 years ago today, May 18th, 1980, that Mount St. Helens erupted. And it was a boomer. But I, I, just, I just couldn't believe nobody's remembered that. It was a very significant event because a lot of shit went down because of that thing blowing up. 
But let's get into some really cool shit going on. Noel Clark has epic ideas for Doctor Who. And if you watch this cute video, he's even brought up one where if he was running the show, he'd have an Infinity War style episode where suddenly all the Doctor's you know, companions and all that, whatever not, have to come back. And he starts going into it and all that. And he says he's not, you know, close to the fact that he, you know, of Mickey Smith returning. Now, a lot of people have been going around going, I don't want to see the Paternoster gang back. I want to see the, the problem is the Paternoster Rogue gang characters were created by Stephen Moffat. What are the chances? You know, so I don't know. So cute little video. I'll bounce you the link to it. It is over on Facebook. So go check it out. It's not that long. It's about 38 seconds. Moving on. Speaking of videos that aren't that long, Bradders Walsh, like I said, this is where we got. Um, he put this up this morning, I believe. We've been on nights, so couldn't post that, but now summer's here, and me and Rack It Up Joey are giving it a charge. So, whew, so Bradders Bangers is back on the air on Instagram, and, of course, he's given away the fact finally now that it's all over that apparently they've been doing night shooting. Where? We don't know, because once again, wow, weirdness. Okay, and Cardiff, there's a real buzz about it. Uh, Russell T. Davies teases. They, of course, new Doctor, Doctor Who series with Jodie Whittaker. Um, he, said, uh, he says he has some news for the production, you know, from the production team in Wales. All right. Now, the R RTD passed on some Doctor Who news from his friends working on the show in Cardiff. You know, we know that. He's a real buzz. But yada, yada, let's get to the good stuff. Okay, speaking to Matt Baker and Alex Jones on the one show last night, he said, down in Cardiff, there's a real buzz about it. People I know are working on the show keep saying, it's brilliant, it's brilliant, it's brilliant. Now, on Jody Whitaker's casting, he goes, science fiction is interested in the future. This is the future. Get left behind or join in. That's what I say. Kind of wise words from the fat Welshman there. So, all right, moving on. Now, we're not here to talk about the Star Wars Ewok head. Okay, so let's forget about even putting together the words Ewok head. I know what you're thinking, you dirty little birdies out there, Ewok head. Okay, moving on. But here we go. Sci-fi fans will soon have the chance to own a TV, piece of TV history, which, guess what? Uh, wrong. I wish these guys would fight. Check the ship before they hit the bong. I'm not kidding. It's not a piece of TV history, you freling moron. When a full-size TARDIS is going on sale at Eubanks Auction House, and the reason why I'm saying that is because it's the one from the 19, used for the 1965 film, Doctor and the Daleks, and of course, Daleks Invasion Earth 2150 AD. And it's one of two that were built at Shepperton Studios for this. So no, it had nothing to do with the TV shows, you freling idiot. It was built for the movies. But still, it ought to be enough to make, ooh, 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 uh, that's just enough to tickle my balls. I'm not kidding. It, it, oh, what? Oh, no, I'm losing it. But, you know, who wouldn't? This is the chance to own one of the movie TARDISes, Peter Cushing, man. You know, and the cool part is they kind of sort of halfway canonized him. You know, if you go check into the stories about the plan scenes for Day of the Doctor, look it up. I'm not going into it. So, and uh, we won't talk about Ewok head. All right. <clears throat> so. Look that out. Check that out, man. You know, <laughs> okay, the TARDIS signed on the inside by cast member Jenny Linden is on sale at Eubanks Entertainment and Memorabilia Auction on May 31st and has a guide price between three and 5,000 pounds. Yeah, but, oh, man, it's just such a piece of history. It's not, and it, has, it was never used on the television show, so I don't know why they're going, it's a piece of TV history. Well, you're a piece of non-researchable crap if you ain't even looked that up. But, so, I'm not kidding. I just get a little excited, but the sad part is, no, there's no way any of us could probably afford it out there. So, remember, they're giving away, you know, they, you know, well, they're not giving it away. You have to buy at an auction this TARDIS. We won't ask about how much for Ewok head. Moving on. Dr. Stars, Catherine Tate, and David Tennant prep Sky 1 series. Americans, that's right. Uh, Tennant and Tate are, are going to be back together on screen in Americans. It's a new series being developed by his Dark Materials producer, Bad Wolf for Sky. 
and the scripted drama, which is being written by Tate, which, who previously starred, of course, in The Office, yada, 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 follows the pair as they move to the United States. It is thought to be in the advanced stages of development for Sky One. Now, if you want to read more about this, it's interesting these two are doing a series together again. And also, you know, we've seen them in various other things, and they are just funny as hell together. So, you know, ugh, just mm, sounds like it's going to be interesting. Maybe I'll pick that up or not. All right. And before, you know, here's the thing that made all the fanboys go out and bang their heads against the post. So they realized, wow, um, it was only a week. Uh, it turns out that, yeah, the first season Blu-ray, which, by the way, is series 12. I, don't, I wish to God they'd get off this bullshit where in America they got to go, it's season one of Tom Baker. No, it's series 12 of Doctor Who, you jackasses. But, and I died laughing as I was messing with someone the other day. Did you hear series 12 is going to be out on Blu-ray? And they're like, wait a minute, I thought they were filming series 11. No. Um, so, collector's edition release date, it'll, it's been pushed back a week to the 18th of June. I already have mine on pre-order, and I'm really looking forward to checking into it, seeing all the new you know, features and whatnot. And, you know, because I do have a lot of these episodes, bootleg, and um, that I picked up at various cons, bootleg, and, um, you know, I'd like, and even though they did have some of the features, you know, added on to the DVDs, bootleg, um, I would like to really see, you know, just how well this comes out in Blu-ray quality and all that. I'm just looking forward to this. Mm, makes my armpit sizzle. No. What? Okay. Nerva event, Frank Bellamy Inspire posters for sale. I was originally going to drop this article, to be honest with you, because this event itself is limited to members of that Facebook group, Ark in Space. But if you're interested in this kind of thing, um, it's going to be a special event organized by the Ark in Space Facebook group celebrating the visual effects and other designers who brought Doctor Who to our screens. And it, like I said, if you're interested, you're into the graphic design thing, you like these kind of posters, whatnot, I'm going to leave it for you to go check it out. Like I said, I was originally going to cut it because when I found out that way, you could, um, this event is limited to the members of the Facebook group, and if it's like, come on, really? Why the hell are you even advertising this then? But and Canada, Canada is also going to get a cinema outing for Genesis of the Daleks. So please um, go check. Matter of fact, da, 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 da. this of course June fourteenth in Cineplex Cinemas. Be sure to go to the Cineplex website if you're in Canada and find out if this is going on at your local theater. Okay, support that baby. Oh yeah, I'm halfway tempted to because. But then again, I'm probably working that week like hell again. So, but I would love to go see that in the theater. But my wife would be like, "Wake up, jackass! It's time to go home." All right, moving up. And it's no disrespect. It's just when I get out of work, I am dead beat, tired. I'm not kidding. It feels like I've run like a forty mi four minute mile, you know, in this body. I'm like, it's like, oh, okay. And sadly, there's a lot of talk out there about the ultimate super fan. And apparently they have given this label to a young child whose father and mother or whatever had basically dropped a ton of shit on her that they bought. So now she's the ultimate super fan as labeled on way wrong. This is the definition to me of ultimate super fan. And this is Graham strong. He is the reason why, or one of the reasons why, sorry. There were a few that you had the original audio recordings of the missing episodes of Doctor Who. He was one of those guys who had set up a reel to reel tape recorder, and we're talking high quality audio, really high quality stuff, with simply a mic shoved into the one speaker of a little television. And he let it record so he can listen to it when he got home, you know, from work or whatnot. And he donated not too long ago all his stuff that he had. And apparently we now know why. So, okay. Graham Strong was a 14 year old schoolboy when Dr. Who began in 1963. He was an electronic student. His hobbies included building valve and transistor radios, as well as repairing televisions for his neighbors. He was the proud owner of a secondhand reel to reel tape machine that he decided to use to preserve the audio of this exciting new serial. Following the Dr. Dalek's master plan, Episode 7, Strong used his electronics knowledge to wire the audio output from the television into the tape recorder. Okay, so most of the guys, I thought, sorry, I thought he was one of those guys who did the microphone thing, which a lot of guys did. In this case, he wired the audio straight into the tape recorder, man. 
a highly dangerous procedure and breaks every rule of electrical safety, but one that resulted in recordings that were crystal clear. He was one of a small number of early fans who recorded audio from the now missing episodes. However, he is believed to be the only one to record directly from the television, resulting in the superior quality of his recordings. In 1994, an accidental meeting with Dr. Fan, who had contacts in the BBC, brought his collection to the attention of the corporation. Now, by this time, the master tapes of most early episodes had been junked, and the episodes were either missing or only existed in film prints. After reassurance that his tapes would be carefully cared for, Strong handed over recordings containing over 100 Doctor Who episodes. His recordings have been used for animated releases of missing episodes, such as Power of the Daleks. His recordings are so clear that they often exceed the quality available on the surviving film prints of the episodes, and as a result, a number of DVDs of early episodes contain audio taken from Strong's recordings rather than the film print. This, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ultimate Superfan. Not somebody who had a bunch of shit recorded for and bought for me and bought for them, but somebody who, with love and care, managed to preserve a big chunk of Doctor Who's missing history and gave it up, you know, and donated it, I mean, so that the rest of you know, the world, you, me, and everyone can enjoy it. This is Ultimate Superfan. And sadly, he has passed away at the age of 69. You see, it just amazes me how many people think that in order to be a fan of something, screw you, group, that you have to be, you know, the person who buys more things, owns more rare items. Sure, there's, I have a few things here and there. Like, I, let's see, I got my little Funko Pop, I got my Daleks, but and the thing is, the main reason I collect autograph photos because when I, I like to meet the people who are involved in these things. Sadly, I'll probably never meet Jody Whitaker. But my friend Beef was out there, and he said, "Look, you know," I, and I said, "Yeah, I would just love it if I could have an autograph from her, even though chances are I'll never meet her in this lifetime." I'm not kidding. It's pff, what's the chance of her coming anywhere near Ohio in the next hundred years? But you never know. And like I said, there's Ingrid Oliver. Like I said, um, there's a lot of people I meet along the way that I like to keep you know, little mementos up. And there's people who I'd love to meet, you know, just maybe having a little piece of them here. But like I said, you'll notice I have a variety of things. I don't really collect too much of one thing in general. I'm kind of a jack of all trades. So you look, that ain't from Doctor Who, is it? Okay. So just to me, if, you know, if something has taken hold of your life so much, you know, that you've drawn into it, your interest in it, it moves you and it motivates you to do great things, inspire you, know, just from pure inspiration. Then you're a fan, not just by what you buy. Uh, wait, I can't get my head off. Oh, no. Ah, well, take my word for it. I'm still bald. Good night. <laughs>